Texas. So my Bible was packed up and everything, so I just did my morning reading here on the couch. I was actually outside of a plan this morning, reading kind of just something that I wanted to look into and refresh on. And I'm glad I did, because I saw three or four things that really were uh, different for me to see. About 10 minutes, I'm gonna go take a shower, get ready. About an hour and a half and I'm getting picked up by a lift this morning, which is something new that we're trying. Uh, the price comes out about the same as when I park my car at the airport, but the reason we're doing it, I actually would prefer to drive over there, but maybe it'll be great, we don't know. But the reason we're doing it is uh, one of the cars, uh, something's wrong with the catalytic converter. Uh, we're waiting on a part to come in, so I can't get it fixed until the part comes in. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to drive that one over there because I don't want anything to go wrong. I'm under, you know, time constraint. I got to get on the plane when I got to get on the plane. So I have time for variance. I didn't want to leave Ashley with the car that's super loud right now. I'm just standing out here with my bags, waiting for a lift to pick me up so I can go to the airport. That's him right there. He's coming to get me. To get me, I say. super easy to get in and out of. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the lift driver was chatty. And I know that y'all think, as an evangelist, I wanna talk to everyone. But everyone who knows me well knows I am an extreme introvert. And so, a little drained. All right, so I'll see you in Houston. Now I need to go get my rental car, head over that way. Coincidentally, the phone's been dying, iPad's been dying, Camera battery was dying, other camera battery was dying. I don't think I charged anything before I left the house, which is totally not like me, by the way. I charge everything. So, here we go. Houston to Beaumont. Got my rental car, now it's time to go. here in Beaumont, Texas. I'm at the hotel. I've got about an hour before my first meeting, which is dinner with the pastor, who is a friend of mine, and I'm so glad to see him. Uh, so I'm gonna get in here and get uh, everything figured out, taken care of. Hotel room. It's time for me to do some major charging. The pastor just called me out because I haven't had my camera out at all. This is Byron Ellis. He's pastoring a very, very significant growing church here in Beaumont, Texas. But more importantly, he just bought fried alligator. And boudin. And boudin. It just breaks right there. Look at that. That sausage with rice in it, folks. It's super yes. good. Awesome. Yes. Was there anything else I could grab y'all at the moment? I'm um, going to bring you another soda. Yeah, another, another one. Uh, I have... Just finished a great meeting with the pastor. Super excited about what's going to be happening tomorrow night. So I'm excited to bring you along with me for tomorrow night's service. Good morning, I'm here in the hotel room. It is Wednesday, June 7th. Tonight I'm preaching, but last night while we were having dinner, the pastor asked me if I'd come in and just talk with the staff some this morning. 
And so I'm going to go in and talk with the church staff today. Um, and I think that'll be a good moment just for us to connect. And uh, that's one of the things I really like to do is talk with ministry people when I'm out and about. I, I do it at home too on the phone, obviously. But um, So I'm going to go do that this morning. So I got up. I did some reading um, I've been kind of praying while I've been doing things here in the hotel room to get ready to go. So it's going to be a good day. We're going to go do some ministry. People are going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit tonight. I'm really excited about that. We're going to see some healings tonight. I'm really excited about that. It is go time. We are out of here. All right, I'm here at Redemption Church. I'm about to head inside and talk to the staff. This is so cool. They have such cool stuff up out here. This is good. I'm, I feel like I got a word in the car I'm going to share with them. So, I just got to figure out how to get in here. I'm assuming there's a way in, but I'm not, you know, from here, so I'm not sure. Hey, I was just calling someone. How are you? So you guys are all, you, most of you are very young. For a church staff, you're a very young church staff. For a church, you're a very young church. Uh, there is a grace on the house right now. You've experienced explosive growth. I do need you to know something, though. You're at a stage where things are about to have to shift. Every single one of you about to have to grow into who you need to be. You guys all need to become the staff member of a church of, of 1,500 about as soon as possible. And that'll get you there. And so you were in an atmosphere where you were almost in faux Pentecost. So what I'm believing for tonight is that you walk into this atmosphere and you see the exact same thing that you saw, but with the lights turned on. All right, we're about to get this barbecue. I live in Nashville, so I have a so this is the best barbecue in Beaumont. Uh, they they only make enough for the day until they're sold out. So oftentimes they'll put a sign up that says sold out. But they have it today. They'll just put a sign out and put your paper that says sold out no more. Until but, sold out. Yep. So good. What did he get? Oh. Oh. What a good time this morning. Uh, I killed my camera. <laughs> they don't know me. Um, while we were recording at the church, but power of God moved in that staff meeting. I don't want to get all the details on that, but we did see an outpouring of the power of God. Really excited about that. Very exciting considering we're going into tonight. And uh, So I'm at the hotel for a little bit. I'm resting, about to make some phone calls. And then uh, and we're going to get out and do some ministry. So please give it up for my dear friend, Evangelist Casey Mason. Come on, why don't we give Jesus praise all across this room tonight? I thought in Beaumont, Texas on a Wednesday night we could give him more praise than that. Come on. Why don't you turn around to two or three people and just say you're about to receive something. So I'm glad to come and minister to y'all tonight. What I was really excited about, though, is that I got to see my friend, Pastor Byron Ellis. There's a graphic coming up on the screen. Oh, it's right back here. There's a QR code. you got to lay flat on the ground. I want you to lay on your stomach. <laughs> There's a huge fast. Some of y'all are excited right now, but you might be staring at me in a minute. Taking it all in. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. We'll be very clear about what's going to happen. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. We're going to sing a few songs. And then you are going to receive tonight. You are going to receive tonight. City of Samaria and proclaim to them the Christ. That's the preaching of the gospel. Verse 6. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. So there were signs that were happening. Verse 7, for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. 
people, they were casting out demons and people were getting healed. Okay? Um, I was scheduled to come be with you a few years ago, and then something in 2020 happened that got in the way. I don't, I don't know what that was. but So something happened kept me from coming. But we've been talking about it for quite a while. Well, at the beginning of the year, I had started to receive some understanding, some spiritual understanding about how the Lord is about to move through the nation. And so we were talking about it. He said, you know what? I think the way I'd like to use you is have you come in and pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And a little bit of the trust that you have in your pastor. Do you trust your pastor? Yeah. Okay, your pastor trusts me. So I need you to extend that to me tonight. Amen. In that hour and a half, what I normally do is I get you to be okay that I'm not coming in here to have you do weird stuff. <laughs> I'll have an hour and a half to prove that to you tonight. But we had a great move of God this morning. I was actually very shocked and how well things went this morning. And uh, uh, to see people receive us in a small room like that. So, so, now first let me just say this. If you are saved, and you have never spoken in tongues, you've got the Holy Ghost. You've got the Holy Spirit inside of you. Yes. The Holy Spirit's primary ministry, both prior and after receiving the ability to pray in tongues, is to teach you. I think. We often talk about what it's for, and we talk about the fact that it's for evangelism. I think Pastor Byron did a great message on that. Here's the issue. When we, when we move tongues off to a non-issue, we miss the power. Because here's the news. The ability to pray in the unknown language, that is the power. Yes. That's the power. And this is how we know it. In 1 Corinthians, it tells us that uh, 1 Corinthians 14.4, it says this, the one who speaks in the tongue builds up himself. But your mind gets out of the way so the Spirit's mind can get in your way. Yeah. Praise the Lord, because what does it say in Romans chapter 8, verse 26? It says, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we all, but the Spirit himself intercedes with us, for us with groanings too deep for words. Hmm. And he who searches hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. I'm here to tell you tonight, I think things would improve in your life if you got your mind off of it and you got the Holy Ghost mind. You hear what I'm saying tonight? Tonight you're going to receive, okay? You're not going to receive from a place of doubt. You're not going to receive from a place of doubt. If you come up praying, Lord, if it's real, I'll take it. You've already prayed a prayer of doubt. A prayer of doubt. So you've got to believe that it's for you tonight. You've got to believe it's real. People are getting healed in this church. Demons are getting cast out of people in this church. Yes. Come on, sit. And y'all think tongues is so bizarre? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on. I have a friend who said, he said, my dad was casting a demon out of somebody one time. And he said, I walked in the door when I was a kid. He was a kid when this was happening. He said, I walked into my, my dad's office. He said, and the guy he was casting the demon out of was up on the coffee table on all fours barking like a dog. But tongues is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is very rare that I pray for people and they receive and they absolutely lose their ability to control themselves. Okay? You will, you will, it will not be crazy. Okay? You will be in more control than you think you're going to be in. And the other thing is this, and this is one that really helped us overcome some barriers this morning, is the experience is more normal than it is spectacular. I thought I would just drop in here at the end of the video and let you know that we made the choice um, to not film uh, much of the altar ministry the other night. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a tension between we need to capture footage and people need to have an authentic experience with the Holy Spirit in the altar. And so I prayed with people for probably uh, two hours or a little bit more in the altar. I mean, just basically going in circles they would once i would get through with people they'd move new people in and i'd go back to the beginning and pray and it was really taking time um i didn't have two hours worth of people to pray for quickly i was taking my time with folks as i was praying but um we saw some pretty fantastic stuff in the altar we did have people going down in the power we did have 
Uh, a lot of people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We had several people get healed. Uh, two ladies stuck around to the end, and both of them had um, unusual but uh, neat healings that took place. Um, one of them said she hadn't been able to stand up for months because of the pain, and all the pain went out of her body. Another lady has been having ear problems, and I don't know why I did this, but I went up and I put my hands on her like this. I don't normally do that, and I put my, and honestly, it could be something as natural as it could have been her hair, it could have been, I, I could have done it for any kind of reason. But I go up, I put my hands on her, when I pulled my hands away, she said, when you pulled your hands away, all of the problems in my ear, it was like they pulled out of my ear. Really interesting, huh? Um, but we had, I mean, it was a good altar ministry. A lot of prophetic ministry from me, which is abnormal. Um, and I was saying things that I didn't understand the context of. And then I kind of came back later that night and was asking for some, you know, what was I hitting? Because you could tell when it's hitting in the room, you know. When you say something to someone and 50 other people go, oh, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> that you've hit something. And so I, I was like, tell me what, what were these about? And, um, but I had one girl, this was just my fun moment for the night. This one was, I, I don't think this one was for her. This one was for me. I'm sure she was blessed, but it was for me. But I, uh, I had done some ministry with a lady. I'd said something to her and, um, I was going to lay hands on her. And in, and as I went to do it, I stopped, I took a step back, I pointed at her, said something to the effect of power of God touch you now, something just, you know, something like that. I point at her and when I point at her, she wham, right down to the ground. And uh, <laughs> I turned around and some of these, some of the people who do have charismatic backgrounds in the church have come out of really abusive charismatic backgrounds. So um, I turned around and looked at a couple of people on stage who I knew had come from backgrounds like that. There were staff members who I'd met earlier in the day and I looked at him and I said, well, how's that for pushing people over? <laughs> didn't even touch the girl and just and so I do have a couple of clips of things that happened uh, one of them um, the last girl that I prayed for she's the pastor's assistant actually and again just a lot I don't know about these people's backgrounds but I prayed for her um, the power of God touched her so powerfully she was overwhelmed and then I had another prophetic word for her about her getting touched by the power of God. She breaks again, and then I lay hands on her again. I say, Lord, could just confirm uh, your word over. And then she begins to speak in tongues. And, you know, there's like speaking in tongues, and there's like speaking in tongues. And she was up here. But earlier that night, I had had a, a word for her brother who was going to dismiss the service and tell everybody we were going to keep praying for, for folks. I'd had a word for him. And it wrecked him so much, I called another staff member up to dismiss people. <laughs> I said, he's, he's worthless now. So let's have someone else come up. But it was a good night. We had a lot of fun things happen in the spirit um, and just in the power of God. One of the questions I got from someone is this, is do I go in and just push this into the room? And I will let you know that every situation I've stepped into where I've done this lately, this has been asked for. Um, I did Sunday morning services in two churches where I didn't do anything, no altar ministry whatsoever. I just get up and teach. And so if you've been connected with me for a long time, you know that my teaching ministry is very important to me. So this isn't all I'm doing. In this situation, I went in specifically for this. Um, but uh, man, I'm telling you, powerful time of ministry. What was really crazy to me is how we had such a powerful outpouring in the room with just the staff. There were only about 10 people in there. They were all a little skeptical of me coming in. Um, even though they trust their pastor, they were kind of like, you know, who's this guy coming in just to do Holy Spirit stuff with us? And they, they were a little, they were a little, what's this about? And then I come in and we have such a powerful outpouring in the morning staff chapel Again, like eight to 12 people, 10 people, something like that. And the power of God hit so strong. I just thought that was unique and interesting. And um, I'm not super comfortable with that. Like I wouldn't want to go into a small group and do this. I have spent so much ministry time in church services. I'm comfortable with everything that goes on in a church service. I'm comfortable with a keyboard playing. I'm comfortable with me. I'm comfortable having a microphone. 
as weird as that, some of that stuff, just I'm comfortable with it. Uh, but to have a small room like that, or a small group, we were still in the sanctuary, but to have a small group like that and it be um, be powerful, I really, I really enjoyed that. But pastors, I need to come to your church. So what you need to do is you need to go over to my website and let's set up a date. I want to come to your church. I want to preach. And, uh, and let's get that on the books. And if you want to help me go to more churches, one of the things you can do is go to jasonmavel.com slash give and become a monthly ministry partner. I cannot do this stuff. I, I know it. Nobody likes to talk about it up front, but if we don't have the funds, I can't go places. It costs an inordinate amount of money to go do these things. It also takes a tremendous amount of my time away to go do about between the staff chapel and the evening service. I did about six hours of ministry, maybe closer to five. Uh, it took me 19 hours in travel time to do that. So it took 19 hours for me to go out and do that ministry. And so we need your help so we can fund uh, really just the practical side of the ministry. It don't cost anything for me to get in the altar and lay hands on people. It costs an inordinate amount of money to get me to that altar. So anyway, love you, appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.